everybody, it's Emily Carlin, Territory Manager in Western Wisconsin, and Ryan Bates, Field Agronomist in Western Wisconsin. And we're out here in a alfalfa field. It is just before May 1st, just a couple of days before May 1st right now. And we are having a lot of calls on alfalfa winter kill. Um, it's been a really, really rough winter. You heard from us just a couple of weeks ago. And, and things have definitely turned, I think, for the worse in many, in many cases. So, Ryan, right now, I mean, what are we seeing? And, some of this right you know a few weeks ago we're out there just starting to see green up and we're really excited to see that uh, now we're getting enough regrowth um, out there uh, getting three four inches of regrowth on some of the uh, warmer ground that we're seeing that separation we're seeing the stuff that's going strong and healthy and then on the flip side we're seeing those bare spots and plants that are struggling so you got one like this that's got good regrowth good um, symmetry and you split that crown open and it's nice and firm and white uh, nice going you get other ones that uh, you split open and they got a little bit of green up on top but you start digging up and you know digging up those tap roots and, and looking at them and a lot of crown rot and their mush here uh, this plant's gonna die so starting to see more of that starting to see patches show up and some tough decisions being having to be made on alfalfa fields. Right, so not everything is just black and white for how you can decide if an alfalfa stand needs to stay or what you can do with it, but what are, what's your assessment? I mean, what's your process and how you're evaluating some of these and how you'd make that determination? Right, it, it's really taking the, going out there and walking that whole field. I uh, do multiple stand counts. I got a uh, square foot, go out and throw that around and get an assessment of where the plants are. We're targeting on older stands, minimum four to five plants per square foot. Older, our newer stands, new stuff that was seeded last year, we should ideally be um, up in that 12 range, plus range plants per square foot, uh, because those stems, our crowns are smaller. It all comes back to, we, we really wanna have 55 stems per square foot to get our maximum yield, and anything under uh, 40 stems uh, per square foot is where we wanna draw that threshold. Um, and But we really need to wait till it's four to six inches tall to make that assessment. So we're a little bit early trying to make it make it done and quicker and getting those fields out. In case you want to spray those fields off and um, no till into them or something, or get your rotation figured out as well. We want to make those assessments. Um, but walking that field, getting the gauge on where the spots, using UAVs uh, to get an aerial photo of them uh, has been really helpful um, as we get getting that technology flying and getting a bigger idea of what's looking like up above and where those bare spots are and then having conversations with growers about where's your feed inventory what are your options um, what where where your comfort level is on having that forage uh, for you or, or seeing down another field for next year absolutely so I mean in cases where the stand might be a little bit older but you know even just two years can guys come in and can they interseed some crops? I mean, what can help with some of the tonnage if that's really what, what dairymen are looking right. for right now? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. As we look at it, um, you know, stands that are over 12 months old um, going in there and interseeding alfalfa due to a uh, chemical release by the alfalfa, you get autotoxicity and you're not going to get plants established. So, you know, if you got something you seed last year, um, you can have some uh, luck going in there and interseeing some alfalfa, especially with big bare spots. Older stands, you know, you gotta look at considerations going in if they're with like a red clover or some type of grass, a fescue, orchard grass, uh, thicken up those stands um, to fill those out and give you another year or two on those fields so you get that rotation uh, back to where you want it. Um, you know, most guys I think are sitting all right on alfalfa inventory on the dairies, but uh, a lot of people as well that, uh, could use a little bit more and they're gonna have to probably keep some stands that may be on the fence but uh, because of their foraging needs are gonna stick stick around or we're gonna thicken them up a little bit right so obviously it's gonna be a case-by-case -case situation so ask your pioneer sales representative to come out and look at your alfalfa stands with you and obviously Ryan and I will be out there right beside them to help make these evaluations because we know that they're tough ones so please reach out and we'll see you guys next time that concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.